Thank you for listening to Interview with DJ Nocturna. If you're watching on my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I'm speaking with an electronic London-based trio called Decommission Forest. Thank you, guys. I got Howard, who, Howard Gardner, who is um, the filmmaker in the group, right? I got Daniel Vincent, who plays the piano and the synth, and then uh, the vocalist, Max Rail. Thank you, guys. Hi. Thank you all for joining me. I know it's, uh, you guys are, are in London, halfway around the world. For me, it's about 9 o'clock a.m. in the morning here, and yes. it's like 8 o'clock p.m. in London. Yeah, so you guys are going to be going to bed. Well, not quite, but pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I mean, you guys are, you guys are the main the, you guys are the main guys from the for the band, right? There's nobody else. Just uh, trust them. Yeah, it's just a few of us. So, how did you guys get together? How did you collaborate? Because uh, this is a this is a, an amazing project, very different and unique. Um, I love the spoken words that you put into the project, as well as the sound. They all work together in the videos. I just wanted to. How did you guys collaborate? How did you get together and form this? this band and I know you it's your second album. Yes, it's um, one of those things that's probably best part of 20 years in the making. I think we've, we've all known each other for a, for a really long time. Uh, we've all been in sort of other bands and kind of, sort of worked on each other's music in terms of remixing and, uh, you know, just kind of giving moral support, I think uh, most of the time, but, uh, but we've always said, oh, at some point we should really really go and do something and I, I guess we finally got around to doing it back in 2018 I think it was with the first album um, oh. Forestry uh, that was um, a little bit of started out really with with Howard and I who don't live very far away from each other so we, we kind of popped around each other's houses and uh, you know sent each other little snippets of music and little bits of textures and, and, and whatnot and we, we started to put that that album together um and then howard's left um <laughs> that was it what did i say um but uh, then about halfway through halfway through the recording of that um we we, we um can't remember how, how, how it came about now but i think it was just one of those things where it kind of got mentioned in passing that we were putting some 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 new music together and and, and starting a new project and um, uh, and, and we, we managed to talk Max into uh, into joining us. Uh, so so about half the record, uh, half the first record was was kind of Howard and I, and, and just kind of really experimenting with sounds and textures. And then and then Max joined us for the other half, and and then there was kind of a little bit of grafting the whole thing together. I think on the on the on the first record. Uh, and as we went to do industry, that was obviously the the first time that we'd really kind of gone. To the idea of planning out a, a, a whole album as, as a trio, uh, so it was um, it was really exciting. And as I say, we've 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 all been friends for for many years. And, oh, uh, so and, uh, and as I say, remix each other's music and followed each other. And you know, so it's it, it's kind of a natural natural thing. But it just as as, as with a lot of things, it just kind of took a little while to uh, to come about. So Howard and Howard and Daniel, you guys were the first members, right? Of the and you guys put the forestry record together, right? And yeah, then absolutely. did, did Max come after? A little Sorry? bit. Max came after. After yeah. The so first so album. As, as we as we were recording forestry, um, we were about probably two or three songs in, um, and and uh, yeah, as I say, I, I think it just came up in conversation with Max that we were working on a a new record and. Uh, and, and a new project and uh, you know and, and we kind of said would you would you be interested in doing something I think I think when it very first started out it was um, Max is uh, out, of the, out of the three of us probably the best the, the best most musical mu musician um, so so it was really a case of getting Max in to come and play some some piano or some synths and, and that kind of thing uh, and, and I think well, Max, you'd probably answer this better than me, but I think it was, you were like, actually, can I just do the vocals? Uh, and I was like, yeah, why not? Why not? And so so we kind of knocked some stuff back and forth. And like I say, I think on the the, the first album, I think you play on or sing on or vocalise on half, half the songs, is it, Max? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it's four, I think, out of the total company. How many? Oh, I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eight, I think. Whatever. Yeah. 
that makes sense. Yeah, well, I think in my mind, I thought you were maybe considering a few different vocalists and were like, I was going to be one of many sort of guest voices kind of a thing. Um, and I don't know how it sort of evolved, but uh, hopefully you just liked what I did so much. You wanted me to do more. Well. I just don't think anyone else wanted to do it, Max. I think that's what <laughs> So, so Max, you, you're you're the main you're the main vocalist for, I know for industry. And what about forestry? Were you also a part of that? Yeah. So I say I joined about halfway through. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're all, you were also the vocalist for um the the for forestry. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So tell us about you know I I'm not sure what happened to uh to Howard. Um, I I guess he's probably trying to kind of come back in. I'm I'm waiting for him to come in and he'll just pop in. He he disappeared earlier and then he came back in. So I think he can do it again. So he's very glossy. Yeah, very magical guy, right? Uh okay. so so tell us about forestry. I know that's the first album that came out in 2019. What what, what was the title? Uh forestry. What is how does that what was the meaning behind that title? So so when we uh we, we first started thinking about doing something new, um there, I was in the middle of recording another record um, with um, uh, the Resonance Association, which is a band that I'm also in. Yeah. And, and I'd had a lot of thoughts about a, a certain type of music that I wanted to wanted to make. Um, and it's kind of very much kind of in the in the mindset of listening to things like, you know, uh, Current 93, Ulva. Yeah. You know, Nurse of Wound, Cyclobe, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I love those guys. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I was kind of very much in that headspace at the time. And um, for, for a band like uh, Resonance Association, which is kind of far more guitar oriented and, um, you know, not really of, of, of this kind of music, um, I, I found myself kind of drifting further and further away from where I where I'd kind of planned to start out on that record. And I had started to have a lot of little bits and pieces uh, together. Um, and, and I started to talk to Howard about it. And we, as I say, we were swapping some, some kind of ideas around making maybe a drone album or something, something very much in, in that vein. Um, so, so the first, the, the, the first album forestry is kind of in terms of the kind of in a musical space, it's, it's very much piano led pianos and strings and, and kind of much more kind of like that, that kind of neo folk current very kind of mm -hmm. that current 93 kind of kind of sound um, yeah. with then a lot of kind of ambient textures and, and that kind of thing um so as i say we, we got halfway through max joined us and that's when things like uh the first track drifted into darkness which is just kind of a an evolving um uh piano loop with some some strings and bits and pieces on it that was one of the first ones we did and it was kind of a really short piece of um, Max's narrative that we added to it, and then we, as we as we evolved, we then went into um, to, to more kind of complex songs mm -hmm. for us, at least uh, things like uh, "Sleep Under the Leaves" and um, you know "Black Holes" and things like that that had yeah much more complex lyrical content and and we, you know and at that point I think as we drew, came to the end of that 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 album cycle of recording and uh, uh, and, and writing it it was kind of really clear then that we, we would be able to do something else. And, um, you know, Max has always, you know, as he'll tell you, has, has been a vocalist, uh, sorry, a, a, a lyricist for, for many years in terms of his work yeah, the with other, the, your, your band guns and, History of Guns. History of Guns, yeah. But I think this was a, an experiment for everybody, really, to see how it would all kind of fit together. But it, it, yeah, we got to the end of that album, kind of really pleased with what we did. So, uh, so when we came to do industry, we we did it completely differently. But, but you know, it was it, we knew the chemistry was there, so that was the main thing. Yeah, I, I like how you had forestry and then industry, so you had that T R Y in the end of the. It's just a play on words, but I think it's interesting. So, um, it was, I don't know. I, do you guys know if he's if he's able to come back on? I'll, I'll check. I, I'll, I don't know if he texts you guys, maybe. Yeah, he's he's um I know Max um you you were also in another band called History of Guns, which is a great band. I love the music. So um how do you find it a little different to be to, to be doing do you do you write the 
who writes the the the, the vocals, the you know the poetry and the the spoken words? So yeah, it's mostly mostly me. Uh, there's one of them was, was Daniel's piece, but yeah, the rest of them are mine. Um, oh yeah. It was a strange experience for me because I'm always all the bands I've been in over the years. I've been on kind of keyboards or a bit of guitar. I've never been the you know front front person of the band with the microphone. Um, so it was, it was a very different sort of space to be. And obviously with Daniel and Howard being very much the sound guys, um, yeah. it was like a very different role for me to try out. Yeah, I, I actually liked the, the spoken words, how you incorporate that with the film and, and the video and just the music and how it all coincides together. And, you know, I love spoken words. I mean, I, you know, I big fan of Nick Cave and, and the Bad Seeds and when he did his spoken words and the secret life of the love song. Um, it really says a lot about, I mean, you start envisioning what this, you know, you see images in your mind, right? When you have spoken words. Yeah, uh, I think so. The, you know, the the video, um, the, un, the a comforting uncertainty, that's a really um, intense video. I, 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 I actually love it. Uh, tell us about that. I, you know, there's a part I, I was really... Um, you know, I, I like the lyrics. I mean, the words like like the ancient curse. May you may you may you get what you want. The comforting uncertainty. Something will will go wrong, which is very true. Yeah, yeah. that was um, it was awesome. Wells, I first heard say that uh, like the ancient gypsy curse. May you get what you want. Um, that's always stayed with me. The kind of you know that if we ever get that thing that we hope for most in the entire world, actually will probably be our undoing, and it's. Kind of yeah, it's kind of like saying uh, you, you some people die uh, doing what they love, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and you know the, the visuals there with the uh, with the amp with amputation. Oh my gosh, that just absolutely. It maybe it's so true that you find these these video apps now, these apps, and they say, oh, you know, check this out. If you do this, you get these you get these emojis, you get these things for free. And then he picks up his finger <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, and then I, I like the part where you go, I don't think this is from me, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not a flat, no, it's just, uh, I, don't, I don't think so. It's I don't think that me. part, but you know, it's funny because it may not be completely that way in real life, you know, but there are, there's actually places in the world that do that and they're, they're really poor countries and they, they will cut up a finger just to get money for something to eat, you know? Yeah. Which is really a sad reality, but I mean, there's there are apps like that where you say, "Oh, you do this, you actually will get this," and it's like, it's so true. And I like how you put that into reality with with music and just the whole concept that you put together. And um, uh, God, I, I wish Howard was here because he he can uh, explain a little bit more about the visuals there. So he does the visuals, the the, the actual bit um, film, right? The video. And then you guys all put the music. So Daniel, you kind of help out with the music, yeah. Yeah. So so one of the one of the one of the things, I, and I can say this because he's not here, is that 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 Howard is is a genuine visionary when it comes to putting together uh, putting together these kind of uh, videos. So you know, in 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 you know the the day job for for Howard is doing CG work for for film and TV, um, and, and he's mm. been doing that for. His, well, for, forever, I think, really. Um, but but he's done stuff with with Max and I previously on our, our own projects in terms of doing videos for us. Um, give give him a, a you know a, a pad of paper, a pad of paper and a pen, and and he'll have he'll have a music video for you. You know, and even if it's a flip book, um, he's you know, and he's, he's one of these people who's naturally gifted at, at all the you know the visual arts. So you know, as as, as we said starting a band with with somebody who's who's got such a visual flair and at the same time uh you know with his non-bio project he's got the that kind of real keen ear for the, the texture and the kind of the atonality of the of, of some of our music comes from from howard's kind of love of that that whole kind of sound world that he creates a, a around it as well so you know it's probably selling him a little short to say that he's the visual guy because he does that and he's also um you know integral part of, of, of the sound of the band as well as the um as well as the visuals but 
Uh, yeah, company, uh, comforting uncertainty. We we shot over a few days, didn't we? So so Max, you and you and Howard went out first and shot around uh, North London somewhere, didn't you? Originally. Yeah, that's right. Manor House and there's the New River Studios. That's where the scenes are outside where we see the app that you mentioned. Um, and we did the interiors there. And then we had another shoot out there with Daniel around the Barbican, didn't we? Yeah. So the um, Barbican, the Barbican is, a, um, is a sort of a, a brutalist um, uh, area of uh, apartments and, uh, and a big uh, art centre right in, right in the centre of the city of London. So it's surrounded by offices and uh, what used to be the kind of the main banking district uh, in the in the centre of London. Um, so it's it's kind of strange. It's it's all concrete, um, concrete and glass. But then I guess most of London is now. But but this is kind of 1960s concrete. It, it's it's a bit like walking through um, somewhere like you know if you've seen the Clockwork Orange. It's all kind of yeah, very yeah. Much that kind of era of uh, of, of British. Uh, architecture and design um yeah no i like it i like the black and white kind of the kind of uh you know it's it's nice yeah but but we were um we we shot it over the course of an afternoon but we uh we we, we shot everything so quickly because we we, we didn't want to get turfed off for uh for filming on on on, on site so uh so oh, there's yeah. i think there's one the one scene that i'm in where i'm I, I, I'm sat with uh, with my my socks and shoes off. We shot so quickly. I was desperate to get my shoes back on in case I had, in case we had to do a runner halfway through uh, and get chased by a security guard or something. So, oh. uh, but it was um, it, it was it was a you know like most of the, the things that we've done as a as, as a trio, it's been a real pleasure to do, to do, and it's um, uh, no, nothing's ever too much trouble for for Howard when it comes to the comes to the videos. I think. Um, and, and Max and Howard have already been out uh, working on um, an, another track that we're going to oh, another out. video. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think we we're kind of already getting to the point where we're um, coming to the end of this obviously album cycle. We've got a couple more things from 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 this album to come out in terms of some remixes and some other bits and pieces. And oh, we're already okay. starting to think about you know what what we do next and what the um, what the, the the tone will be, I think, of the of the next record. Um, I think we've got a, a fair idea of, you know, what the music's going to sound like. The wit, but it's but it, a bit like the the uh, transition from forestry to industry. I think we we're, we're just thinking about where you know what what the what the next one's going to look and feel like. I think. So industry, there's eight tracks, and I know there's a theme here. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the the ant theme. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that? Sorry, you can say that again. The the ant. I there's a there's a song. Oh, the ant theme. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember how we got to that. I think Max, that was you, wasn't it? Yeah, I think um, it, the way I approached the the coming up with the words was either um to sometimes the pieces they gave me had titles already, and I listened to the music and just see what came up in my subconscious, but then. So I've always written lyrics, words, poetry, even if there hasn't necessarily been an outlet for it. It just sort of builds up in notepads in a drawer somewhere. And so I was flicking through there and I had this piece called Ants um, from, I'm guessing about 20 years ago, the first piece. And I, I just read through it and I liked it. Um, and I think I wanted to get away from sort of doing things that are more like lyrics and rhyming couplets. And this was, this was a disjointed series of images that I'd seen from different chapters throughout my life. They all sort of mean something uh, to me. Um, and the kind of the ants, <laughs> they're sort of marching through. It's hard to sort of um, get a picture. So we see them at the start and then we see them at the end. And it's like the march of time. And if you, if you look and spend time watching ants at work, you know, they're all coordinated. They're all planned. Yeah, I was thinking about and, that. You know, ants yeah. are like, I mean, when you look at their colony, right? They have an ant colony. I don't know. When I was a kid, I used to just look at ants. I would just be sitting somewhere and you would see the trail of ants and then they would bump into each other and they were just like, oh, excuse me. They would just go away. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> but that's it. They're, they're so they're so industrious. There's no, they're not slacking off work and chatting gossip or, you know, trying to avoid work or anything like the human condition. Um, 
I've been reading this stuff recently about, you know, they're saying that was is consciousness a virus? That that's why humans are the only ones who have this ability for self-reflection. You don't get it in, in any other animals. You could have intelligence without consciousness, which would be more of a AI sort of type creatures. And that's like what ants are, this kind of organized network of yeah. you know, intelligent. They're building, they're doing all this kind of stuff, but they have no sort of consciousness or awareness of their own existence. Um, and so I like that as a sort of metaphor for sort of moving forward from different through the different places. And then I've just put tax on that this sort of images of oh, these there snapshots. Okay. okay. Howard's in. Okay, let me see. Because I was gonna do a separate interview with him if he couldn't come back on, but he's he's joining us now, so hopefully he'll be able to. Excellent. Hey, hello there. He's growing his hair long in the meantime. <laughs> That's a wig. <laughs> Well, you know, the, these filmmakers, right? They disappear and they can always come back. Yeah. He's all CGI now. All right. Oh, uh, hi, Howard. Sorry about that. I'm back again. Okay. Yeah, we were. Yeah, that's okay. I was going to do a separate interview with you if you couldn't come back in, but I'm glad you're here. We were just talking about, anyway, we don't want to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were, we're talking about, you know, I, I mentioned uh, the, about the video. Uh, a comforting uncertainty, which I, I, which is really a, a, one, a, a great video. I Thank mean, you. I like how you incorporate the the spoken words and the actual just intense, um, you know, scenes, which I th I thought was is real, re like real life actually. Um, you know, so how do you, do you guys all collaborate to put that together? I mean, it's like you you have a you have the visuals, you got the sound, and you got the whole the 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 word the the lyrics. Yeah, uh, the music came first. I was um, really impressed when I first heard the track and um, it, it struck me as being very filmic. So I, I had some ideas in my head for films that I'd like to make and that one just seemed to present itself as about the right length of the track. Um, Dan and uh, Max were very enthusiastic about it when I first showed them the script and I wasn't sure if they would be interested in making this with me, but I pitched it to them and yeah, they loved it. So we all worked together and we spent two days filming it around London and um, yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. It's it's come together really nicely. I'm very, very pleased with it. Yeah. See, this is the difference between a, uh, a film professional and, and, and Max and I, it's like how it just makes it sound, oh yeah, yeah, we just did two days and just knocked it, <laughs> knocked it together. So uh, we, we, we turned up when we were told to and, uh, and, and did our bits, but, but Howard did all the, all the hard work on that video for, for sure. I, I, Howard ne neglects to mention the weeks that he spent afterwards stitching it all back together and, you know, editing it. It did take it quite some time, yeah. Making it look cool in it and that kind of thing. Yeah, Daniel was saying all the wonderful things about you while you were away. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, and just... Uh, so you guys must have this all similar belief system to be able to work well together and putting everything, all the videos and all the sound together. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think we, we certainly share some aesthetic sensibilities like that. Yeah. And I, I know you have the, you know, you have, you're, you're inspired by musically your inspiration. I, I know it's coil and all the, all those great guys, uh, psychic TV, uh nurse at wound who i i yeah i i love uh St stephen stapleton and all that and uh yeah it's great now the other video that you had um what, what was it called uh, there's another one you guys did was it um we did ants quite recently and um also dan works on one as well for drop brick drop brick yeah yeah i think for drop brick we took um was was made of all the outtakes that we had from um yeah, they have uh, remixed from a comforting uncertainty. So we, so in terms of putting together a lyric video, we just basically synced up, synced up the lyrics, and then I think we just progressively degraded the video. Uh, I think, I think, because we only had uh, of all the outtakes, we kind of stitched it all together, and we had, I think, enough for about half the song. So, so I think we just basically go through the whole thing where it just. Um, it, it's in a it's in a loop of so, however long and then it repeats again and it's slightly de slightly degraded and and so on but to be honest um once again it's it was kind of standing on the shoulder of giants to to take howard's howard's b-roll and um and and turn it into something else and it was just a lot of 
uh, programming up some some stuff to you know some some uh, filters and you know uh, visual filters and then and then dropping the lyrics on over the top. But um, you know it was it was it was a nice it was a nice thing to work on I think. And 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 in this day and age with um, you know the immediacy of releasing stuff digitally, it's just not feasible for for bands at our level to um, to to shoot a, a, a new video for every single thing that we do. So you know even with um, you know when when we released Ants Part One, obviously Howard had done a, a great CGI rendered uh, video for that, but, oh, yeah. but you know that that takes time and you know. We're, we're, in, in all honesty, we would rather devote our energy to, you know, real kind of music videos like Accompting Uncertainty and then spend the rest of the time on the music itself. Um, because, you know, the, 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 the sad truth is that, you know, on YouTube and things, is people will watch it once and, uh, and move on. It's not like the, the good old days where you'd be on 120 minutes and you'd be on every week for, for eternity, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's Those true. Great videos you used to watch. Yeah, I, I like to play on words with uh, drop break, you know, the hangry and angry, <laughs> something like that, right? I, I, like I'm hungry, I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Yeah. That sounds like every day for me. <laughs> so how, how do you guys get together? I mean, are you all live in different places. Um, do you guys meet up and create this together or you kind of like email each other? And I mean, now these day and age, people do that if they live in you know different parts of the world. Yeah, I mean, we don't live an enormous distance from each other, but it's not that easy to meet up on a very regular basis. So we do a lot of remote collaboration for sure. Uh, that's a big part of it. Yeah, I think I think when we did the by the time we had finished the first record, we did very, very, very much remotely with the exception of. Howard and I at the very beginning kind of getting together and producing a lot of um, a lot of the kind of textural material. Um, and then we, you know, we were kind of at the point where we should thought we should go out and do some promotion and everything else like that. And then COVID happened and and that was us for, for 18 months, really. Um, so shooting the the uncomforting um, ugh, uncomforting uncertainty, comforting, a comforting uncertainty video. Put my teeth back in um was you know the first time we got together the three of us in 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 some years really oh so, yeah well, so what was that was that film during the pandemic when everybody was no it was it oh. was it was uh like last summer really, so wasn't it, was, it? it was probably just as things were starting to open up so oh. so in the uk i think we were able to you know um the well the venue the the barbican where we we filmed some of it we were you know, it was just at the point where people were allowed to go indoors, that kind of thing. So um, because, you know, so, yeah, during, was, the, during the pandemic, was England really um, were they like telling people not to go out? Yeah, when, absolutely. Yeah, right we had a proper lockdown here. Yeah. Oh, so if you went out, what happens? You get in trouble? Yeah, you get told to go home <laughs> by a polite English Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> English <True>. Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I know you guys also contributed to an album as a tribute to Coil, right? I think you have a, you have a um, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We Hamid submitted um, tracks to a, what, two maybe? It's the guy um, in the Netherlands who organizes that and the Leoc project. And we, how many songs have we contributed now to his work? It's two songs, isn't it? Or three? I, I think I think we've done one. I think you've done it. You've done a couple of non bio ones, I think, for it, wasn't it? I have, oh, yeah. No, hang on, no, we did. Did we do one off the last album as well? Yeah, yeah. We um, sent in one of the tracks from um, our ambient album we did, didn't we? The um, yeah, that was the last. That was the last amps. one we did was "Leave No Trace." I think it was was that on there? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. So yeah, we've collaborated with that guy quite a bit now. He's um, he's mm. reaching out to quite a lot of musicians to do the Coil tributes and covers albums and what have you that he's doing and I expect we'll probably deal with him again in the future I think that's quite a nice way to get our music heard by a wider audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah what I think is good about um, what, what Eric's doing there is it's not a tribute like you get these tribute where everyone's doing a cover version of this is this is bands for people who who love and are inspired by Coil doing their own thing um, mm. 
and so yeah i've discovered a lot of things from from just just listening through to it. i like to have it particularly when i'm commuting for some reason have it on my phone um but yeah it's good because you're freed from not trying to recreate coil or trying to reinterpret coil or, or you know coil a coil um they don't really need that but they've inspired so many people it's great mm -hmm. to bring together that's sort of inspiration in one place i think so are you guys planning on any live shows showing your video in the in the background i think that'd be great i mean uh i think we're heading in that direction for that. sure yeah it's definitely so, uh, something we want to do we've talked about how it would work because i think when they were doing the music a lot of it's recording you know synthesizers um in real time and so yeah. you can't it's harder to sequence so we were talking about building something completely different for a live show maybe the, uh, the 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 challenge I think with a with a band that yeah the, as Max says that works like we do is as soon as you start thinking about doing a live show you start thinking about how you're going to do it and as soon as you start trying to set something up to to do it you end up recording some new music and and then you do something else and um, a lot of what we did on the the there, there's a, a companion record to to Forestry called 14 Amps which we um, we we kind of put out. Uh, exclusively on Bandcamp, we didn't put, we didn't put it onto Spotify or any other streaming platform. Um, um, but that was kind of very much taken a couple of the kind of outtakes and other little bits and pieces we had recorded during the um, uh, during during the industry sessions, and then looking at how we would build a a kind of far more loosely structured, um, you know, almost like a live set. So. So it is kind of a little bit more repetitive, but also far more kind of textured and uh, not not as kind of song oriented. And I think if we were to do a live show, it would probably probably a bit be a bit more like that. Otherwise, otherwise you you know we'd just be one another one of those those acts that goes out and everything runs on rails. It's all done on a computer, and and we're just there to kind of press press a button at the beginning at the end. And that I, I think that in itself would probably be. Well, it'd be great for me and Howard. I'm less less sure about Max. Max. Max would be doing all the work, and we'd just be sat there, you know, taking <laughs> him on or something. I don't know. This seems to be a real move. In, in, sorry, I was sorry. just going to say this seems to be a real move in some of the nights I've seen Howard at and that we go to, where people are moving away from sort of sequence laptop stuff and going back to having sequences and keyboards that they're doing live. There's less kind of having it all on a backing track and people going back to the roots. I think of electronic music. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know. You, any plans for the for the next album? Um, da Daniel was talking a little bit about it. A any plans with with regard to the visuals? <laughs> Everyone's gone really quiet now. <laughs> Everyone oh, looks at Daniel. <laughs> um, no, so so we've 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 recorded some more material. Um, yeah. but uh, obviously at the moment, our, our main focus at the moment is is seeing out the last the last parts of, of uh, the the industry cycle so we've got a couple of remixes that we've still done uh, for this on this record um, with, with a couple of our friends and collaborators that we'll, we'll be putting out over the next couple of months um, as I say Max and Howard have been working on uh, another video for another track uh, some okay. that, that just didn't didn't fit with um, with, with industry and uh, and, and probably is the kind of that became the catalyst, I think, for for a lot of the recording of the the next kind of tranche of songs that we, that, that we've done. Um, but once again, it's it's one of those things where I think with the the climate of streaming and uh, and you know trying to trying to get something that sticks in in the in the public consciousness, it's uh, for for bands like like us doing a you know recording an hour's worth of music and putting it onto wherever it wherever it goes and going out and doing the promotion for it um is, is very difficult it's, it, it doesn't seem to have a huge amount of return for, for bands like us these days because because it's everything's so very transient so um i think by, by the time we're, we're ready and we've we've got a bunch of stuff in the in the can it, it, it may well be that we do a series of eps or um some other kind of way of of, of getting our, our music out there um uh, and, and you know, with you know, working with, as I say, a, a visionary like Howard, you know, it's it's it, it it's much more exciting really to to hang something maybe off a video and and put another kind of three or four songs around that as a as an EP than, than perhaps going away and doing 
setting up an album. But you know, I, I think we've got we've got probably another 10, 10, 12, 14 tracks that are kind of somewhere somewhere near done. Uh, oh, okay, no. and, and I think we've got one that's actually done, and that's the one we're doing the video for. But you know, it, it'll 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 come along when it when it's ready. I think. And and you guys have your other side projects, right? Like the history of guns. You guys are still doing that, right? The residents, right? Um, the other band that you guys are in. Yeah, we're all in separate bands. Yes, yeah, so history of guns have just got um, been away for ten years. I've just got a new album coming out. Then Daniel's with the Residents oh. Association. And then and Howard's got his non-bio and Pillars of Golden Misery that are always doing stuff as well. Yeah. I think we, I think oh. we should talk about the History of Guns record, Max. It's, 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 like, it's coming out now, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? So when is it coming out? It's coming out on the 1st of August. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've been treated to previews of that and uh, I'm very impressed by it. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wait. I would love to hear it sometime. There, there's, a certain, there's a certain amount of irony in, in so much as it uh it's one of my i don't know if i had a I, have i had another have, have i had a co-write before i think i have haven't i but uh, it's mm -hmm. it's that um there's a track on there that max and i worked on 10, 10 years ago or something and it and and we you know uh it's it's one of those things where you kind of you, you work on work on something and, and eventually it kind of comes out on on, on a thing but that kind of predates uh, all the decommissioned forest stuff. So that is kind of the very kind of prototype um, collabor collaborative effort, I think, between, between Max and I, when it, when it was very much that we were going to do something where we were both going to write music. And, uh, and, and it's, it's really, really exciting to find that now on the Guns record. Yeah. So if anybody wanted to check out your music besides Bandcamp, um, I know there's a link here I got from the press release. I don't know if anybody can, I don't know if this is an open thing for everyone. It's a, it's a link. You open it up and it goes to all the different things that you guys are doing. Oh, yeah, the, link the tree. link tree page, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put that on my, on the bottom of the, after the interview. Thanks, so they, yeah, please do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Considering we all have uh, careers in technology, none of us can be bothered to do a website. <laughs> no, and, you, and you, but you guys are all in. Uh, you guys are all in Twitter, right? Yeah, can't, can't no, that's, that. a lot of people are not. So that's a good thing. I mean, I, I like that one. I like when people are on everywhere. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, is, your band camp is decommission. Just people can just search for decommission forest, yeah. and um, and of course. Your YouTube videos is on there as well, and you have a group page on uh, Facebook. Right? That's right. Yeah, we do. All right. Well, um, big shout out to UTM Music Group. Um, always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. You know, uh, good luck with the uh... show. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he's probably he's gonna be watching. Yeah, you guys are gonna be. Um... <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So uh, thank you both. Thank you all for coming on the show and let me just turn this off thank you pleasure thank you very much thank you for having us yes let me just turn this on thank you let me just stop the recording